Good morning, Spark Summit, New York. Um, I'm Sean Conley. I, I focus on strategy at Hortonworks. Uh, so spent a good bit of my time in the uh, sort of the big data space, if you will. For those of you who don't know me, I'll sort of share two, uh, two things. I'm a longtime Philly guy, so pardon my accent. I live here on the East Coast. Um, so <laughs> exactly. So, and long-suffering Philadelphia Eagles fan. Um, I'm also an open source addict, as I like to describe myself. I've been in open source since early days JBoss, so a little over 12 years. JBoss, Red Hat, Spring Source, uh, in the last four and a half years at Hortonworks. And you know, the thrust of uh, you know, the next you know, eight or nine minutes or so is really talking about uh, how we view Spark in particular, but how do you enable open source technology to be very widely deployed across mainstream enterprises? Um, so that, you know, I'm, I'm sort of in this great position where I get to see innovative open source tech, uh, but also figure out how to translate it to the enterprise. And so uh, while the tech is cool, and I'll get into some of the thinking around the technology, it really starts with why should sort of businesses care, right? Who cares, right? And at the end of the day, you know, Spark, particularly in a uh, broader data architecture, helps those uh, enterprises unlock really enormous potential from their data any and all form factors of data, whether that data is in motion, data at rest, or anywhere in between. And so that's what I like to focus on initially. And I'm going to tell you a few stories from the customer adoption to kind of paint that picture. And then I'll, ta I'll talk a little bit about how we, when we think about integrating Spark into these data architectures, whether they're real time or like 10 years of historical analysis, how does that fit and how can that unlock things? So the, so the first uh, example I'd like to share is uh, you know, the story of web trends. And some of you may have heard uh, the story of web trends. Over the past few years, they've been early adopters of not only Hadoop, Spark, but also a variety of other Apache open source technologies in their architecture. Um, petabyte scale problem. Um, they've been in the space of serving analytics to their customers for a while. Um, 13 billion daily events processed, latencies as low as 40 milliseconds. So this is pretty serious infrastructure. Um, you know, they were able to consolidate uh, their Spark cluster and their Hadoop cluster into one so they can actually operate it and secure it and manage it centrally. Um, they got a lot of economies of scale there. But um, what I like about their journey, and actually this visual here, has been truly a journey where they started off with data discovery and web log analysis and single view use cases. And each use case keeps building on the other as you assemble more and more data. Um, is ultimately the integration of Spark into this architecture enabled them to unlock a new product for the market, right? So it isn't just about doing really cool analytics, but they were able to identify and tap into new revenue streams. So their Web Trends Explorer is really uh, about enabling their customers to do more ad hoc data discovery scenarios um, and interact with the data you know, uh, along with the traditional Web Trends experience, if you will. Um, at scale. Um, two other ones that I'd like to use uh, is really a communications company, and that's really around monitoring channel changes as you're watching TV, being able to get targeted advertising and that kind of stuff. Um, allocate ads in real time. I've talked with a few people so far here, and this ten I've heard this story at other companies a few times, so um, you know, not a new use case. The other use case, and I love these types of use cases, is uh, you know, big data and Spark being applied to railroad companies, right? So it just is not the purview of high-scale, petabyte-scale, web monster-type thinkers. Uh, th you know, this particular use case is, you know, uh, I, I uh, refer to it, lovingly refer to it as the train doctor, where the trains have sensors and they're capturing images, and they're really trying to make sure they stay on top of the maintenance of the rail. And so there's a lot of data, different form factors, GPS location, and other things that they're bringing in to do more real-time analysis of the rail so they can prevent accidents. I live down in the uh, Philly area. I took New Jersey Transit up here. I would like them to actually use a solution like that uh, as well, right? It was a little bumpy ride. We had to stop a few times. Um, but that's how this new age of data is changing how people fundamentally think about what they can do, what the art of the possible is. And so these are the types of use cases that inspire me when I uh, do my job 
as part of the Hortonworks team, and I work with our customers on, on use case identification, if you will. Um, so now uh, I want to share with you some of the trends. Like I said, you know, I'm an open source addict. Um, you know, uh, the technology pace of innovation is just phenomenal. Um, and I would argue that Apache Software Foundation um, played a key role not only in the age of web with the Apache uh, web server, but also in this age of data. There's just a lot of innovation in Apache, Apache Spark being one of, a perfect example of that. Um, and so the implications for making this uh, approachable by mainstream enterprise is there's clearly the data API, right? And so you'll learn a lot about things there, and I have some comments on that. Then there's sort of the enterprise readiness and hardening. How do you make it easy to use, consume, and, and familiar for sort of the mainstream? Um, and then there's more work that clearly needs to be done around data science and analytics, because it is an emerging frontier, right? So there's always innovation there, and we have to enable people to get on this innovative bus, if you will, right? Um, you, they can't just wait for it to stop. They have to figure out how to time their entrance onto this, because it's, go it's going to continue to move. So from a data API, and you saw some of the uh, earlier sessions, it's about providing that surface area for developers. And I, I've spent a, a long time in the developer ranks, right, at JBoss and Spring Source, and talking to developers. On the big data side, it's really around really innovative analytic apps, less about web and mobile. But the care and feeding for developers is very much the same. How do you give them a rich set of APIs? How is it elegant? How do you remove obstacles of adoption? Um, and then when you go to deploy it, how does it integrate uh, easily, right? Maybe abstract how it integrates. So, and Spark is a great example of that is it's able to federate data from almost any data source, right? So integration is part and parcel to getting the data in the spot where you can do interesting things with it, right? Um, and then at that point, it will be a critical tool in the enterprise toolbox where the, it'll be a natural way to develop apps. Um, the hardening, clearly there's things around HA and DR and in, in the uh, Hortonworks uh, uh, realm, we actually have two platforms, a Hortonworks data platform, which is a Hadoop-based platform that we integrate Spark with. But we also have a Hortonworks data flow offering that um, and very much uh, things like Apache NiFi and Kafka are sort of part of that architecture. When you use them together, you get that sort of joined up experience. But these notions of security, encryption, governance and stuff don't go away. You have to address those, particularly for mainstream uh, enterprise. And from a scale perspective, it's not just on-premises. Um, uh, you know, we partner with Microsoft around their HD Insight service. So Spark in the cloud at global scale is important, right? And that's why the innovation continues to uh, uh, need to you know, uh, move forward. Um, and I'll sort of close out on some of the thinking there. But um, again, my developer mentality is how do you make the analytics development process as agile as possible, right? So it isn't, you know, uh, people use data science and at times it feels like it's an unapproachable thing. And to me, it's really about how do you enable agility? Um, how do you democratize that out and make it uh, easy and, and better tooling around that? And there's no single definition of a developer, right? You're a Scala developer, a Java developer, a Python developer, an R developer, or you're using higher level tools and you're doing more business development. So you need to make sure that you're addressing experience across those who really want to get down and dirty, don't want tools in their way, to those who really want a great out-of-box experience at a higher level. So how do you democratize that across all layers, right? And so when we think about investing and partnering and integrating, um, these are some of the things that are top of mind. So to close out, and you know, I'll sort of encourage you to um, hit up some of the sessions, but in the area of Agile analytics and data science, things like the Apache Zeppelin project, um, things like um, entity resolution uh, functions, uh, uh, you know, geospatial analytic functions are important as accelerators in that space. Um, I think there's actually a, a session later on on the Magellan Geospatial Library and how you think about geospatial. Um, that's important for that train example, but it's important in insurance industry and everything. Everything has a GPS location. So how do you make it easy to create those types of applications? Um, the accelerate capabilities for the enterprises, how do you make sure it integrates in a familiar way with a lot of the tools and technologies that make sense for uh, this uh, technology to integrate with? 
Again, there's a broader modern data architecture uh, that uh, needs to be enabled. And then always there's the, uh, the notion of continuing to innovate at the core, whether it's integrated with Hadoop, whether it's integrated with streaming technologies, how do you enable it at the core to do that really well and continue to move the pace of innovation forward? And so with that, I'm gonna close out. Um, uh, I'll just sort of give you a, you know, just one more thing teaser. On uh, March 1st, uh, we, uh, one of our partners, HP, the HP Labs uh, folks have created some really interesting Spark technology. We'll be talking about that on March 1st. Um, so the innovation train continues, right? It never stops. Um, so just stay tuned. And with that, um, hopefully enjoy the conference and uh, thank you for the time.